And so without further ado, let's not dilly-dally anymore. It is a huge, 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 massive honor for me to say hello for the first time to the best pound-for-pound female boxer on the planet, the queen of boxing, in my opinion, the one and only Katie Taylor. There she is. Wow. Hello, Katie. How are you? Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. It's great to be here, Ariel. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you know this, Katie, but you know, I'm supposed to be, I'm a huge admirer of yours. I have a ton of respect uh, for you. Every time you fight, I let the masses know, you know, I'm an MMA guy for the most part, but I always try to let the world know that you are fighting because of not only your great skill, but because of what you represent, how you conduct yourself. Um, as I was saying before you came on, I'm, I'm, I'm a father of a young girl who I'm trying to get into sports as well. I just think you are the quintessential role model. And so I'm just, you, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm a big fan. And so it's just a great honor oh, for, well, that, for that, you to be that on. means so much, Ariel. Thank you so much. Um, I'm actually a huge fan of your show as well. I've actually watched it for the last year, a year and a half. So it's actually such an honor for me to be Come on, Katie. Right now. Where have so you been? Strange. I've been trying to find you. You were actually at the top of my bucket list of guests that I've never had on the oh, really? yes. <laughs> And it's been hard to find you. And now you tell me you've been watching the show. This is crazy. So thank you. I know. Yeah, I know. It's great. It's great to be here finally. Um, all right. So we have a lot to talk about. I just want to congratulate you on the win. Uh, this past weekend, you improved to 20 and 0. There's a lot of focus on your weight class. There's a lot of focus on you, of course, with this weekend as well. Were you happy with your performance this past weekend in Liverpool? Um, I wouldn't say it was a masterclass by any means, but you know, a win is a win at the end of the day. And it sets up a, a huge year for me next year. There's obviously an awful uh, lot of talk over the last, the last few months about the big fights next year. And um, I knew that this fight last week was a kind of like a banana skin type of, of opponent. Um, she was kind of like the final hurdle that I needed to get to, to get past before these big fights actually happen next year. Um, so it definitely wasn't a, a masterclass, but I, I thought I did well on spots and there's definitely lots to improve on, but it sets up a huge year for me next year. And um, I'm, I'm actually excited to go into, into the new year and with these big fights ahead. I think it, it could be possibly the biggest year in female boxing history. I would agree. And I think that that fight against uh, Amanda would be the biggest in female boxing history. Now she has to do her part, but I'm just curious about you. Did you feel any extra added pressure because it feels like we're so close to making that happen? First, you had to do your part. Now the pressure is on her, but going into the fight, did you feel a little more pressure? I think so. Yeah. I was even uh, just even a, a little bit extra nervous, even going into fight week, for example. And um, all everyone was talking about was, it was the amount of surround fight all week. And I was trying to put the focus back on my job. I had to obviously take care of uh, Sharpo at the weekend. Um, and the, I, I obviously have to have to remain laser focused throughout this whole uh, throughout, throughout the whole fight week. So I definitely did feel the pressure of that. But um, thankfully, I came through. Um, like I said, Amanda Serrano has to do her, her job this weekend. And uh, once she does that, and everyone obviously expects her to get through the, over the weekend, once she does that, it's going to be a huge fight. It's, it's probably the biggest fight in women's boxing history. And um, what, an, what an amazing privilege and honor to be in this position. Uh, she is fighting someone that you know. You beat Miriam Gutierrez not that long ago. Do you think she wins on Saturday? Yeah, I, I definitely uh, will be very, very surprised if, if she didn't come through on that. Um, you know, Gutierrez is, is a tough opponent. She's, she's big and tough. But I, she, skill-wise, I wouldn't say she's uh, she's on a man of Serrano's level. So... Um, I definitely would expect her to get through, through that, that fight. Um, but over the last few years, since I have turned pro five years ago, I think everybody has been talking about this fight. Um, so it's going to be a huge event. Um, and it, it possibly in Madison Square Garden as well, which is uh, you know the mecca of boxing. It's the most iconic venue that you could, you could possibly be boxing in. So uh, I'm just so excited to, to be taking part in possibly the biggest fight in women's boxing history in the mecca of boxing. This is exactly why I, I um, turned pro in the first place to be involved in these big fights. Uh, your promoter, Eddie Hearn, said on Saturday that there's essentially like a date, there's everything on the table. She just has to win the fight. Is that your understanding as well? Like if she wins, is this fait accompli? Is it a done deal? I, I I assume so. I hope so. I mean, I'd be very, very disappointed if this fight didn't happen next. Um, so I think everything is uh, lined up towards this fight next, next year. The, the, this, this definitely should be the the, uh, the next fight um, for me. Definitely, I, I think it's all um, it's all gearing up towards this this big fight. 
And like I said, ever since I turned pro uh, five years ago, everybody has been talking about this fight between me and Amanda Serrano. I was obviously scheduled a couple of times before and it fell through for whatever reason. Um, and so uh, this this fight has been talked about for a long time now. And uh, it's so close to happening. I, I, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm just very, very excited about it. Yeah, by the way, in, in your opinion, why hasn't hap- hasn't it happened in the past? Like what because I know you've been close and you fought her sister as well. What's been the issue? Yeah, I have no idea what the issue is. I was obviously training for that fight twice before. Um I was gearing up towards that fight and uh it didn't happen, not because of me. I was the one that I, I was I was there, I was ready to do the step into the ring, but it was her and her team to pull out that fight a couple of times. Um, she she has whatever uh, reason she's coming up with, but I think it might have been financial. I have no idea, but I was definitely um, training and preparing for the, for that fight a couple of times before. Um, so I'm, I'm sure she has her own story, but um, I think it will be a, a huge disappointment, like I said, if that fight didn't happen next. Is it possible that the missing ingredient to all of this, the the, the thing that we needed to make this fight happen, was the problem child, Jake Paul. Is he really the guy that gets this done? Is that the way you're looking at it as well? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's there's been so much controversy and that criticism over Jake Paul being involved in boxing and getting these fights. But uh, if he, if he if he's the person to make the fight happen between me and Amanda Serrano, I'm not complaining at all about him being involved in boxing. Um, uh, he's obviously uh, pretty much promoting Amanda Serrano now. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, he's he's obviously going to play a big part in getting his fight over the line as well. So, um, yeah, like I said, I, I have no problems with him being involved in, in boxing. It means that he's going to make the biggest fight in his boxing history happen. He is pretty much, uh, I mean, quintessentially the antithesis of you. How do you feel about Jake Paul? Um, I mean... Uh, <sighs> Gosh, yeah, <laughs> I, I think he definitely. Um, you know, he, he, people people have their opinions. He's he's getting into the ring. He's he is fighting. He's obviously de- definitely picks and chooses his fights. But I guess he's he's bringing a new audience to the sport as well. And um, if if even a handful of those um, um, new audience turn into, into boxing fans, I guess it is a good thing. But um, I would love to see him in there with a with a genuine fighter. Um, myself, but like, like I said, uh, he's he's good. Uh, he's definitely going to be, gonna be um, an important person for me if it, if it means that he's going to get this fight over the line. So I'm not going to uh, jump in the way and actually criticize him. Sure, and he is willing to he is willing to, to step into the ring at the end of the day and take punches and put himself on the line as well. So that takes a, a lot of courage in itself to actually step into the ring. I was talking to a very good friend of mine named Pete Carroll. He's a MMA reporter as well. And I was telling him that you were on, and I always talked to him about you and how excited I was that you were going to be on the show. And he referred to you as the patron saint of Ireland. He lives in Dublin. He's from <laughs> Ireland. And I feel like that's quite apropos based on how people, you know, I, every time you're on the Late Late Show, I watch those appearances. You show up on the toy show and the young girl is crying. I mean, it's just great mm-hmm. the way they treat you and look up to you and admire you. Do you feel comfortable with a title like that? Uh, I mean, it's it, it's obviously lovely when you hear nice things about yourself. I, I don't see myself uh, like that. I, I don't see myself as some... Um, national icon or something I just see myself as an athlete just like anybody else and someone who's trying to um, obviously do the best that I can and be the best that I can um, but the support and then the, that I get from the, from the people in this country has been incredible ever since I was 7 or 18 years of age uh, as an amateur fighter basically they, the whole country has watched me growing up in front of, the, you know, in front of their very eyes coming home uh, with medals from European championships from world championships from the Olympic Games um, so I, I feel like they're, they're very much part of every single journey. And um, even during the low points, um, when I lost in, in the Rio Olympics, for example, just the encouragement and support that, that, that I got even for, even the low points has been phenomenal. And uh, that to me means means more than uh, more than everything. I think the support that every athlete gets from this country is, is just fantastic. And from such a small country, we produce great fighters. Um, both in the boxing world and and, and MMA at the USC. Um, we, we just produce great, great champions and great warriors, and it's something that I'm very, very proud of. Why do you think they love you so much? Why are they so protective of you, the Irish people? Um, 
I, I really uh, don't know. I mean, I try to to uh, live a, you know a quiet life. I, I try to live a life of integrity. Um, I try to uh, be gracious both in victory and, and defeat um, as an amateur. Uh, um, I, I'm just someone who who um, who has sacrificed an awful lot. I think um, my whole life as a ten year old or eleven year old girl, I, all I wanted to be was an Olympic champion. I think I sacrificed my whole life uh, in order to, to achieve that dream. And um, I just want to uh, be someone who, who breaks down those barriers for young, for young girls coming up. I, I want to be an inspiration to, to the next generation. And um, I think people definitely appreciate that. Uh, so that dream of being an Olympic champion, which you realized in 2012 and should have realized in 2016, unfortunately, I think you were screwed. And a lot of people would share that opinion. <laughs> Um, where, did, where, where is that born from? Like, what, like, how does a young girl who doesn't grow up, you know, in a big town with a lot of things, how does she come up with an idea? I want to be an Olympic champion. Where does that come from? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, um, the minute I walked into a boxing gym as a 10 year old, um, boxing just completely took hold of my heart. It, it just it instantly became my passion. Um, it's just something about it. A, a, a grimy, sweaty gym. Uh, even the even the sounds in the gym. Someone hitting the bag. Someone some skip. Someone that was skipping the rope. Um, the guys in sparring. It just really just took hold of my heart. Um, I, I obviously grew, grew up just watching the Olympic Games, and uh, just instantly all I ever uh, thought of um, was becoming that Olympic champion. Every single day I woke up uh, saying I'm going to be an Olympic champion, and my whole childhood was actually based around this dream. Um, and it is a very unusual dream for, for a young girl to have because women's boxing wasn't even sanctioned in the Olympic Games at the time. So it definitely was very, very unusual, but this is something that I that I wanted and um, I was going to do everything that I could do to make sure that women's boxing was included in the Olympic Games. Has anything topped 2012 for you yet in your pro career, in your life, like the 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 feeling of joy and satisfaction that you must have you know, felt from that? Has anything been able to top that feeling? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think the last five years as, as a professional boxer have been definitely the most exciting. Um, having a chance to box in the biggest stages in the world, um, I had a chance to become, you know, undisputed champion. For example, in, in Madison Square Garden, I had the privilege of boxing in the in the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, a couple of times, and never in a million years. Uh, that I think I, I I have this opportunity to, to box in front of thousands of people and, and the biggest stages, the biggest stadiums in the world. Um, you now becoming an undisputed champion is obviously the pinnacle of, of professional boxing, and to have a chance to actually hold out every single one of those belts that was such a special moment for me. All those milestones and barriers that you have broken, you were also a part of the uh, first um, sanctioned female fight, right, in Ireland. I think it was actually almost 20 years ago. No, it just surpassed the anniversary, right? It was Halloween. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, all the things that you've accomplished, and yet I'm fascinated by anxiety and how athletes deal with, you know, mental health and how they get over these pressure-filled moments. You always seem unflappable. You always seem very calm. Even this past Saturday, I asked you the question about the added pressure. Any moment ever get to you a little too much? You ever have a moment like, I'm at Madison Square Garden right now. I'm in the first <laughs> sanctioned fight, female fight. I'm at the Olympic Games. Do these moments get to you or are you able to block them out, the, the gravity of the moment? I think it's definitely very, very normal to, to be nervous uh, before every single fight. I think if, uh, if you weren't nervous, step into the ring. If you, didn't have, if you didn't have any anxiety, step into the ring. I think there's something wrong with you. Um, I think it is very, it is... Uh, normal to be absolutely nervous but I, I also have 100 confidence in the preparation as well i think i stepped into ring knowing that i didn't leave any uh any stone unturned that i prepared the best that i could and um, i have complete trust in my team i i know that i'm going back to a fantastic corner man a great coach and um, all of these things i think uh reassure me and give me confidence and i'm surrounded by a great family as well um you know a great support and um and people who I can openly speak to if I ever am feeling overly anxious or overly nervous or whatever it may be in life. And I think that's really important to be able to, to speak openly and to be vulnerable, feel vulnerable around people. Um, I'm definitely surrounded by people who I can be vulnerable with. And I think that that definitely helps. I remember after the 2016 uh, disappointment, you did an interview ringside with RTE and you could hardly speak. You were so sad and disappointed as obviously understandable. And I'm wondering if that feeling of disappointment uh, and maybe a little bit of anger and just, you know, just feeling down about the moment, 
if you've used that as motivation to never lose again, because you have not lost again since that moment yeah. in 2016. Do you do you go back to that moment a lot so that you don't feel the same thing again? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. I think uh, any time that I've ever lost, in, in, as an amateur, lost a handful of times, but I think it's the losses that stick with you more than the actual victories, unfortunately. Yeah, they're the ones that you, you often think of. Um, and it, it is absolutely the worst feeling ever. It's it's heartbreak when you, you're you going through months and months of preparation, now believe that you are going to win the competition and you come away with a loss. It is absolutely heartbreaking. And only athletes can understand that heartbreak, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, I, I'd never, ever want to feel like that. And that's why I do absolutely push myself every single day. Um, I push myself to the, to the limits each day and, and beat my body into submission each week um, because I don't want to feel like that ever again. Um, it's a it's a great feeling being on top of the world. It's a great feeling um, uh, getting your hand raised. But on the opposite hand, it's the worst feeling in the world when you do lose a fight. And I definitely don't want, want to be in that position again. Some might not know that you're a tremendous uh, football player as well, soccer here in the United States. And you had a little <laughs> run uh, playing for Ireland. And I'm wondering if you ever play the what if game. And I know you love boxing, but like how far you could have gone as a soccer star as well. Did you ever play that game? Because it looked like you were on a path to doing great things as well over there. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I was the best uh, soccer player in the world, but um, I definitely, you know, I, I had a success um, here as an international player from time to time. But I, I never actually played the what-if game because the boxing was always uh, going to be my sport. It was always going to be my passion. and um. And to be honest, it wasn't it wasn't a tough decision for me um, when I had to uh, just focus on boxing. Um, I was very very happy to to, to just focus on the sport. But you now, if I did make a decision to to focus on the soccer, I would have done the best that I could do. Obviously, I would have um, tried to be the best player I could be. But um, I'm obviously very very happy with the with the road that I took. Of course, uh, Conor McGregor has been very supportive of your career. He's always giving you, you know, public shout outs and whatnot. I remember that scene in Boston when he came into the locker room yeah. uh, after your win to uh, congratulate you. Um, right now, you're kind of on different paths, right? He, he's not fighting. He's coming off an injury and he is beloved, but I think somewhat polarizing in the world of Ireland as well. And I'm often asked about the differences between the two of you. And I often ask Irish media members about the differences in the way you guys are covered and treated and whatnot. Mm. I actually feel like the Irish media didn't accept him early on and didn't give him the credit that he deserved when he was coming yeah. up and doing all those great things. What is your relationship like with Connor these days? My relationship with Connor is fantastic, actually. Um, we, we have messaged each other on a regular occasion. Um, I messaged him after the Dustin Parrier fight just uh, uh, just to offer some uh, words of uh, encouragement, really. Um, he's always been a fantastic support to me, but um, I think he's he's just uh, someone who's actually transcended the sport. He's like, for me, the Muhammad Ali of, of USC. Um, he's a, just a fantastic athlete, um, a great businessman as well. But what he's done for um, in the sport in the sport of UFC has been absolutely incredible. Um, and I don't think he is celebrated as, as, as much as he should be here in Ireland. Um, I think he is an absolute global superstar and just a phenomenal athlete. And he's always been a complete gentleman towards me. Why do you think they were so quick to support you and not support him? Is it because of the sport that he competes in? Because it's a little newer than, say, boxing? Um, I just think he obviously has, he's had a few controversial moments outside of the, of the, the cage as well that people obviously didn't appreciate, but um, I'm looking at him as just a phenomenal athlete and uh, someone who I genuinely think has transcended the sport, who's someone who's, who's become uh, bigger than the sport nearly. Um, every time he does fight, it's an absolute huge event. He still, he still gets uh, the, the highest number of pay-per-view uh, figures and he's still the highest paid athlete in the UFC. Um, yeah, I, I just look at him as just a, an outstanding athlete. Have you ever and trained? I can't wait to, to, to see him come back out to win a ways. Have you ever trained with him? I've actually never trained with him. Wow. No. Um, what a scene that would be. Yeah. Th that would be amazing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That would be phenomenal. Um, yeah, he's, uh, I know that he's trained in um, Crumlin Boxing Club an awful lot, uh, a place where I actually train on a regular occasion as an amateur boxer as well. Wow. Um, I used to go there on a regular occasion for, for sparring sessions. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, 
that's obviously a, a connection that we have. Is that where you uh, pretended to be a boy a couple of times? And, and, uh, yeah, I actually did. Yeah. Yeah. Every, uh, they used to hold shows nearly every month in promo boxing club and they're, they're a boxing club who always got me fights um, on their shows as a teenager when women's boxing wasn't even allowed in Ireland at the time. Wow. Um, yeah. So they, they always, uh, they always got me shows. They always boxed their guys and, uh, yeah, I had to put the headgear on. I had to pretend I was a boy and uh, they had no problem with that. <laughs> and did your opponent not realize you were a girl? Uh, I think the, the opponent did, but the officials didn't. Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> That's stressful in its own right. Yeah, so when I took the headgear off, there was always an uh, uproar. <laughs> oh my God. And, and and you won those fights, right? Uh, they were kind of just like exhibitions. Okay. There was no decision at the end of it, but um, yeah. Yeah. That is incredible. Another example. I mean, that that is stressful, and the, just an example of the barriers that you have broken. Just a, a couple more minutes with you. Is that okay? Is that okay, Katie? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been trying to track you down for so long. I don't want to let you go just yet. Um, yeah. Do you follow MMA? Do you follow UFC? Um, I, I don't obviously follow as much as I follow boxing, but I, when when there's obviously I was watching even the last week's fights, uh, Amanda Nunes, uh, the, the big shock last week. Um, I'm obviously I'm actually a huge fan of the likes of Sean O'Malley. I think he's a phenomenal fighter. Wow. Um, he's probably one, one of my favorite fighters in the UFC actually at the moment. Um, so, so I obviously I do I do uh, have my favorite fighters in the UFC as well. And um, and obviously when Conor McGregor is fighting, everyone here is good. But. Interesting. Sean O'Malley fights in your weight class, obviously on the the male side of things. Amanda Nunes as well. Uh, I'm curious because I know a couple of times there was talk of you and Cyborg. You and Holly home. Has there ever been serious talks of you fighting? You know, Holly, of course, going to go into the uh, International Boxing Hall of Fame. She had a great career in the squared circle. Yeah. But was there ever any serious talks of one of these crossover fights involving you? Um, I know there was kind of mentions of those those fights, um, but I don't think we ever seriously really talked about it. We obviously did, their, their names came up over the last few years, and there's still obviously huge possibilities that those, that those fights can happen. I think. Um, I would be very, very open for those uh, for those fights uh, to happen. I just want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. Really, I want to get more attention to the sport. I want to uh, I want to be involved in history making fights. And if there are the fights uh, that people want to see, I would absolutely love love to be involved in those big fights. Did you see that clip of another MMA fighter, UFC fighter, uh, Molly McCann, who I believe is like a distant relative of yours? She revealed. That's uh, right. Yeah. Right? Did you see this clip uh, from from the weekend? I think it might have been your mom who gave her uh, your your jacket, and she's openly yeah. weeping uh, after receiving this gift. Did you see that clip? I did see the gift, actually. Yeah, um, which I believe I only actually uh, met Molly McCann um, a few months ago, and um, she was actually telling me that we we have the same grandfather. We're actually second cousins. I had no idea that we we're actually second cousins. <laughs> Um, and she was having a chat conversation with me and my mom, and we just couldn't believe that we that, that we had this connection. Um, every day, every day, once that she brought up uh, my my their, my uh, my mom's um, close uh, close family members, so uh, it was it was crazy. Really, um, I had no idea that, that we were actually um, cousins. And since then, we we've obviously we, you know, we've obviously been in touch. And she was at the weigh-in for my fight last week. My mom went over to her, just gave her a hug and just gave her uh, one, of, one of the, the KT tops. And just seeing her reaction, um, I guess, was just uh, was very, very special. But she's a, she's a fantastic person. I'm very proud to, to have the same bloodline as her. How do you not let those moments get to you? Like, how do you, you, you don't appear to be fake in terms of your humility. And yet here's someone who's your age crying because they received a jacket with your name on it, your, you know, your, your team jacket. And it's not just her, it's people all over. I mean, I can't imagine what it's like when you go outside. How do you not let that, you know, make you into this, you know, person with a big head who thinks they're, you know, the, the cool, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? How do you not let this affect you? Well, I don't think I'd be allowed to let, to let it go, get me ahead. I have a, um, a family who has put me up on things straight away if I ever did. Okay. I think uh, let things get to my head, but I'm obviously very, very grateful to be in this position. And um, I don't know, I, I, I don't really think of myself as that person, really. Um, I'm just, like I said, I see myself as an athlete, just like anybody else, just trying to do the best that I can, being the best, trying to be the best athlete I can be. And I think that for me just takes the pressure off as well. Um, I don't see myself as this huge icon or whatever people may may see me as. Um, 
I'm just trying to, to, to be the best athlete I could possibly be. Are you the best female fighter on the planet? Pound for pound, are you number one in your opinion? In, in my opinion? Yeah. Um, I don't think that's that's for me to say, really. <laughs> um, I think it, it, it's the pound for pound rankings are very, very subjective. There's, there's a lot of great fighters out there. Uh, even in the men's division, people say it's Canelo. Some people can say it's Canelo. Some people can say it's Terence Crawford. Or people can say it's Lomachenko. Um, it's it's very, very hard to, 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 to pick the number one pound for pound. But it's great to be in that conversation. And I would absolutely love if people did regard me as the best pound, pound female fighter on the planet. That is my goal. That is my dream. And I'm definitely trained every, every single day uh, to, to be in that position. The fact that you can't even say that just speaks to the humility. Because you are the best pound for pound female fighter on the planet, but you can't bring yourself to saying it, which is uh, very commendable. I think most people would say to you or Clarissa Shields, right? Amanda, number three, obviously climbing the ranks because of course she fights all over the place. Were you surprised that Clarissa, given where she is in her career, went over to the sport of MMA? Were you, uh, were you surprised by that decision? Yeah, um, I definitely didn't expect that, but I thought it was a fantastic challenge for her to, for her to take on because boxing and MMA are, are two completely different sports. It's very, very hard for um, for anyone in boxing to, 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 to cross over because obviously we have no ground game. <laughs> if anybody got me to the ground, for example, it would be a huge problem for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think I obviously you, you, have, you, you always have a puncher's chance maybe, but... It's apparently it's very very hard to stay on your feet, um. So I think it was a, an admirable um challenge for her to take on, um. But I would love for her to to uh, just to focus on boxing now. And there's a lot of big fights out there for her as well. The likes of Savannah Marshall, who's a fantastic world champion fighter. Um, I think Savannah actually beat her as an amateur fighter. So that's uh, that that is a huge 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 fight for now. That's probably one of the biggest fights in women's boxing as well. So. Um, I think there's a lot of big fights out there for, for Clarissa as well. Uh, one thing I love about the sport of MMA is I feel like the women are treated equally in the sense that you yeah. can have a card, 12 fights, 11 male fights, and then the main event, two females, and no one bats an eye. No one feels like yeah. it's a lesser product. I feel like boxing has taken a little more time to warm up to the women. Do you agree with that? And why do you think that is? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, the, the first meet night that I ever had with Eddie, Eddie Heron uh, just before I turned pro was uh, I wanted to take women's boxing where um, the women's um, uh, MMA have, have gone, where they're actually headlining shows, where they're actually the biggest names in, in the UFC, the likes of Ronda Rousey, Amanda Nunes, um, uh, the, the, these kind of fighters who are absolute headline acts. And that's exactly where I wanted women's boxing to uh, to go. And um but I think we have break, broken down a lot of boundaries over these last few years. We have uh, covered a lot of ground, but we still obviously have a long way to go. I love the fact now that there, it's not unusual anymore for, for um, female fighters to be on every single boxing card, but uh, we obviously still have a long way to go. And I love for us to be uh, headline acts. I love for, for, for you know, to be involved in a huge pay-per-view show. Um, and uh, but I I, I love that the you know the progression that women's boxing has made in the last few years. I would hope if you fight Amanda, that's the headliner, right? I hope so. Yeah, I think it's definitely deserving of a huge. That that's obviously um, a huge huge fight. That's that's a super fight, mega fight. Not just a women's boxing, but I think boxing overall. This is a fight that people have wanted to, uh, to see for a long time. So it definitely should be a headline act. And we're not doing no Hulu theater stuff, right? We're going to the big arena, correct? I hope so. That's uh, that's uh, the plan. Um, that's what Eddie Eddie Heron had talked about. He wants he wants a big arena, Madison Square Garden. He wants to um, to, to, to fill out the big stadium. So, um, like I said, what an absolute privilege to be in this position where I feel like I've sacrificed my whole life for this sport. Now I'm in a, in a position where um, the biggest fight in female boxing is just around the corner. Um, I feel like all my hard work is just uh, is coming to uh, to one of the biggest to one of the biggest events in boxing. Uh, you are 35 at the moment. How many more years yes. do you want to do this for? Do you have an age in mind? I'm not trying to push you out. You still appear to be yeah. <laughs> very fresh and in your prime. But do do you not want like were you one of those people like Bernard Hopkins who of course didn't live up to it who said I'm not fighting past 40? Are you one of those? Um, to be honest, I have no idea. I'm, I'm just taking it kind of year by year. I don't, uh, I haven't put any limits on myself. 
Um, but yeah, I feel like so many people at the moment have been talking about my retirement as if they're trying to push me out the no, door or something. No, but no. I'm definitely not um I'm not thinking about retirement uh, right now. I, I feel like I am very, very fresh. I feel like I have plenty of more years left in me. And there's plenty more uh, big fights out there for me as well. So I feel like genuinely the best is yet to come. And I feel like people haven't seen the best of me yet. Um, even over the last few fights, I feel like people have only seen maybe 60 or 70% of, of, of who I am. So I'm definitely excited to to show my best in the, in the, in the next few years. And um, I, yeah, I'm just excited. Uh, if we can end on this, what would you say to a young girl who looks up to you, but maybe is a little shy to go to the gym, to be a boxer, intimidated because she's the only one in her class who likes boxing, who likes Katie Taylor, right? I'm sure there's a lot of intimidation there. There's a lot of nerves about taking that first step. What would be your advice to that I, person? Yeah, I think that taking the first step is definitely the hardest, isn't it? Because um, it can be a very intim- intimidating environment. But I think anybody who takes that step into that threshold has has my respect instantly because it takes so much courage to step into the ring. And uh, once you do that, um, you know, the, it, you're going to just fall in love with the sport I'm as someone who is shy I, I'm a very shy person myself so I can, I, I can definitely relate to that um, but yeah just go for it and uh, I grew up having this unconventional dream of becoming an Olympic champion you know even before women's boxing was even sanctioned as an Olympic sport even before women's boxing was sanctioned in my country so uh, when I was growing up with this dream people were laughing at me nearly as if, as if I was crazy but um, who cares what people think um, if you if you have that dream in your heart, just go for it. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't be anything. Um, that's exactly how I how I, I was brought up. Um, I was brought up knowing that nothing was too big for me. If I got my head down, if I worked hard, nothing was too big for you. And now I see you hobnobbing with the likes of Sylvester Stallone, Rocky. You're, I mean, he, I'm, I'm assuming he knew who you were, right? When you met him a couple months ago. Yeah, that's right. I met him at the Arnold Schwarzenegger um, event, and uh, yeah, complete gentleman. Uh, showed him my ring, my ring magazine belt, because that's obviously the belt that he won <laughs> in Rocky Balboa. Right, right. Um, so uh, yeah, it was great to meet him. Um, and uh, yeah, he definitely expressed his uh, um, his love for the sport, and he wanted. He was obviously uh, we were talking about him him coming to one of my fights as well. So he might even be there at the, the Amanda Serrano fight. Oh my gosh. Out. I would love to be there as well, Katie. I have to say, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was a huge fan going into this, an even bigger fan now. I can't thank you enough for doing this. You know, I think the uh, the country loves when you show up on that year end late, late show with the toys and all that stuff. Yeah. You didn't get to do it this time. So this was my gift to them. You coming on at the end of the year on this program. Uh, I, yeah. I can't say enough good things about you. I'm a huge admirer of yours. I'm so impressed by the way you conduct yourself, by the way you fight. And I hope that we get that fight at Madison Square Garden, um, April, May. Do you want to give us a date? Do you want to give us a hint, a time frame? Or? Oh, I haven't, I haven't okay. got the date right, myself, right. so yeah. I, I wish I could give you the date. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, well, I yeah. look forward to it. And when you're in New York, maybe you stop by the studio. We're in New York as well, so we'd love to have Great, you. Yeah. Anytime. Uh, happy holidays, continued success, Thank you so all the much, best Darryl. to you, and congratulations on everything that you have accomplished. And again, the role model that you are for not only the Irish people, but you. uh, young men and women across this great world. Thank you so much, Katie. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Daryl. It's great to be here. Great, great to see you. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you soon. There she is, the one and only Katie Taylor, pound for pound, the best boxer on the planet. 